Welcome everyone to our Blender 3 to Unreal Engine 5 complete guides. And this time we're creating another fan favourite, which is the AT and AT Walker. But before we get into that, let's talk about our latest course, which is due for release next Thursday and is based around a dungeon modular kit bash. At the moment, we are selling pre-orders with a 60% discount off the release price and we're also throwing in our massive castle course for free if you actually pre-order. Pre-orders really help keep the lights on here and we also wanted to offer a lot in return. So to get your hands on our course at 60% off, which by the way, we won't be offering that for at least six months, to make sure the people that do pre-order get a really good deal, then check out the links down below and head on over to our Gumroad site. So before I finish, let me just go through what you're actually going to get for your money, because after all, that is what the most important thing is. So in this course, we'll be going through the entire dungeon modular kit creation in Blender 3, and then it's onto Unreal Engine 5, where you'll actually get to walk around your own dungeon. We'll also be creating things like torches, water, sewers, all that good stuff. And of course, if you want to get your hands on this for free, then head on over to our Patreon. We'll get all of our courses, models, blend files, things like that for absolutely free or the price of a cup of coffee, whichever way you want to look at it. Also, don't forget, we create courses basically every single month and we have a library of over 20 courses now, which are free to check out in the links down below. So now let's actually crack on with this AT and AT Star Wars Walker. And actually, some of you may know, this is where it all started for me. So round about 2014, something around there, is when I first got into 3D modeling, and that is when I decided to create an AT Walker and stick it on the Steam Workshop, actually. And it went out to all the people playing uh, City Skylines, and it's still there to this day, and people seem to love it. Now back then, I was a real noob, actually, and it was nothing like what I've actually created there. Here you can see the modeling ain't that good, and there's a lot of issues with the mesh and things like that. So I thought I'd revisit it eight years later, and hopefully, I'm sure you'll think I did a much better job this, this time. So with all that said, let's get started on our Star Wars AT Walker and onto the actual modeling. All right, everyone, I'll see you over in the modeling. Welcome everyone to the modeling section of our AT Star Wars Walker. And the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in a reference. Now, because this one is actually so long, I'm probably not gonna go through everything on here, but you will actually see the entire build except the back where I actually forgot to record. So apart from that, you will see the entire build, but you will of course understand how I actually created the pipe because you will have seen the rest of the build. So at the moment, what I'm trying to do is, and what you should always do if you're working to a reference is get kind of the general scale of everything. And that's why I'm actually using this reference here. Now, there are a lot of variations of the AT Star Wars Walker. So what I did was I just picked one and then actually I put my own kind of spin on it a little bit. You know, I kept to certain things, but then other times I pulled out some, you know, um, faces and things like that just to create those plates and make it look really, really nice. We also did a little bit of that as well in Substance Painter. So you can see what I'm trying to do at the moment as well is work out how to actually pull all these little parts out because what you can do is you could, you could Boolean or you could go around and create cubes and stick them on and things like that. But it's much easier actually if you use the mesh that you already have to create these lines and things like that. So you can see I'm creating all of those um, edge loops down there ready to actually extrude in. So then you can see then I just take away those faces and then it's really easy. Now I do recommend if you are actually doing it this way, you can, same as Boolean, uh, make a mess of your mesh. And what you should really do at the end of this build is go in and re-topologize everything. Um, we simply haven't got time to actually do that. That's the only reason why we don't do that. This build already, I think, came in at uh, six to eight hours, and that's kind of the maximum that we allow for every build. But if you were building this um, for a AAA, um, AAA just means a, uh, a company with a lot of staff who basically can devote, can devote a lot of time to actually creating assets and things like that. If we were doing that, then this asset might have took 50, 60 hours or something like that, you know, to add all the uh, polish, um, to re apologize everything, ready for rigging and things like that. So, although this um, actual um, walker would be really, really easy to actually rig because they, they're blocks, they're not 
um, you know, they're not like a, a human or anything like that, nothing really needs to bend like muscles and things. This actually is pretty solid and the actual parts that actually move, they're really easy to see. So you can see I'm adding in some little details on uh, this actual main body of the Star Wars Walker, ready to actually boolean them out and just turn them then in the right direction. I wasn't actually sure if this would work or not, but actually it turned out really nice. And you can see there, what I did is I brought in the ball tool, and when you bring that in, it's a free add-on within Blender, and when you bring it in, all you can do is press uh, Control minus, and then we'll, well, first of all, you grab what you're actually going to um, use for a ball, and then you actually grab the object that you're actually going to use the Boolean on, and then you press Control minus, and what that does is it actually hides the Boolean, and then you're free to actually uh, move it out and move it in. Now, just so you know as well, if you do use that, up at the top right hand side you can press the end button to bring open the um, panel and in there you can actually bring the boolean back so if you don't want to use a boolean or turn it off or something go to the uh, the end panel um, and you'll be able to actually uh, fix it all right so i'm working on the neck and you can see there i used a, a nice technique where we just basically used the cylinder that we'd already got there just to create that and then just mirror it over and I think that's what I found the, uh, the easiest way to actually do that. The neck actually wasn't the part that caused me problems. The part that caused me problems was actually bringing all of this together. It's quite hard to bring it all together so getting all these dimensions to um, this size and also the underneath because uh, the underneath we didn't actually have any reference for which makes it quite hot, so I had to kind of um, wing it, let's call it, let's call it that, and actually, uh, you know, do it on the fly kind of thing. But I think, as you'll see, it turned out actually really nice. You've probably seen the thumbnail as well, so you can see it did turn out really well. So you can see on these, all I've done basically is extrude, boolean, added edge loops, and the actual build itself, I think if you take the time, um, isn't that hard to do. Um, even for beginners, the, the problem is the scale of it. It's, it's such a, a long build if you're new uh, to Blender that it's probably not worth um, taking this on um, because it's just so big. So what you might want to do instead is, uh, if you're new, just take on like you see here and build in the actual gun. Take on something like the gun and try and actually uh, build that out and then maybe take on just the head or something like that build that out and see if you're right, how long it takes you and then see if you're prepared to actually put the time in to create the rest of the build. So this gun actually, uh, I, it was, you know, it was uh, quite easy to create. The thing is, when, we, when I first started with this, uh, I didn't intend to put all this detail on. We intended not to take so long and kind of do a nice silhouette of the actual um, walker and in the end though, because we were just going to allow uh, let Luke actually come in with a substance painter and you know do all the little details and things like that but in the end I got so into actually building this as, as you do sometimes that we decided to you know create the whole thing near enough in Blender and there was very uh, little work actually to do in substance painter. So with the gun as well, um, I am I have got a reference for the gun, um, but I'm not keeping too much to the reference. I'm just getting the general shapes and making it look, you know, giving it that sci-fi look and uh, you know pulling things out where they need to. So you can see that I'm using proportion editing just to uh, just to pull that out if you if you want to know. Again, I'm using insert there. Now if you use insert, which is the I button, and just bring it in, you can press it again, and what that'll do is allow you to bring it in per face, and if you press it again, it'll allow you to bring the whole of whatever you've got selected. So very easy and nice tool to use. The actual uh, AT Star Wars Walk has a really nice um, silhouette actually. Um, to say when it was you know, developed and, and brought out, and now simple actually, the actual, um, you know, the whole of the thing is, it's it's a really, really simple design. It's very, very iconic, um, and it's it's down mainly to the silhouette. It looks um, formidable. When you first saw it in the 80s, uh, walking through the desert, it, it really did look um, something special. Let's, let's put it that way. And of course, that wasn't done with uh, CGI. It was done with, um, you know, models, basically.
Now up to this point, I didn't really have any um, kind of problems, um, pretty much because it's all just inserting, extruding, things like that. But the actual um, head here, as we move on up with the eye and things like that, I did have a fair few problems actually creating it. It's not so much the shapes, it's more of the overall shape where it's actually bending. So for instance, on this uh, walker, you can see that it goes from the top, it bends all the way down to the bottom, and it also bends out going towards the neck, which makes creating things um, quite hard to do. So you can see as well, I did actually mess up here. I went to put an eye in, and on closer inspection, because it didn't look right, um, on references and things like that were found on Pinterest, um, yeah, I could see that the eye, it didn't really, it's not really booleaned in, it's basically just stuck on the side. And to make it look right, I needed to basically get rid of this eye. But first of all, um, before doing that, I built the side of it, as you can see there, and then I can see, okay, that's not looking right. And now you can see, I'm actually trying to come in and fix it, but the problem is, of course, when um, you've booleaned something like that, it's very hard to fix it. So what I'm actually going to do is, in a minute, get rid of the entire boolean and just recreate that, as you'll see. So I put this on the side. That's more like the eye now, the iconic eye. But I can see that this ain't going to work. I try um, actually filling it in like that, and then I just get rid of the whole thing and completely fill it in again, as you can see there. And then that fixed it. So sometimes you just got to go back and fix things in that way just to make sure because when I was shading it smooth it just wasn't looking right because you've got obviously all of those edges and things like that and made it really really difficult. Now the problem I did have with the eye is the eye when you look on the reference um, re any reference on this Star Wars Walker it looks it, it looks round uh, but it obviously needs some sharpness there because it, it's supposed to be part of the metal work um, that's actually you know part of the Walker but but it was really hard to actually get that correct, you know, get enough actual um, hardness on the shape. So now you can see again using this exactly um, pretty much the same technique. So apart from there, I'm using um, a little bit of a knife tool, which I did for the just above that eye as well. So that's the K button. So if you want to know how to actually create, you know, pieces of mesh within there, um, just press K and then it'll bring up the knife tool. Hold control when you're using the knife tool, and what that'll allow you to do is turn off the kind of magnetism. It's kind of magnetized to, um, you know, um, vertices and things like that. If you hold control though, then it's it doesn't have that effect. All right. So now I'm creating like the weapons that are uh, on the side of the AT Walker, and you can see. Again, these, these weapons, they, they're quite weird actually. They've got like a shield on them and we need to make sure that we generally get the silhouette as we're doing with everything. And then once we've got the silhouette down, then we're free to kind of put our own, you know, kind of slant on things and just free them to a little bit of artistic freedom to make them, you know, look the way that we actually want them to. Now, although this is um, 35 minutes long nearly, the actual modeling section, I think that we've slowed it down at just the right speed so you can actually see most of actually what we're doing here. And if you were to go in and you slow it down to, let's say, a quarter speed or something like that, you'd easily be able to see exactly uh, what we're pressing and things like that. I also try when I'm doing things um, to keep them um, the same throughout the actual build there. So you can see um, I pulled them out on the other weapon as well. So I try and keep a similar theme throughout. Um, don't stick parts on which are completely different to other parts. Try and get away from that. Um, and try and keep, you know, if you're going for a sci-fi look, try and keep that actual uh, artistic look of actual sci-fi. Not something that looks like it's medieval stuck onto the side of something that's sci-fi. Try and, you know, develop that artistic freedom in that way. You see at the moment what I'm doing is there, I'm shading smooth. Um, and I'm putting it on normals, as you can see, the auto smooth. Um, but I was having some problems in just making sure that it was, you know, completely uh, shaded smooth and looked like actually a hard edge, which sometimes can be difficult. 
Now this bit was a pain actually because it just looks like a piece of something stuck on the eye. I mean, I think they took it from a chameleon or something like that. This whole thing actually I think was taken from a chameleon and that's where they got this little slit for the eye. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a pain to put that in because it just, you know when you're up close it doesn't look right but when you take a step back then it actually looks right. Also the way these um, AT walkers walk, you can see that they've also taken that from the chameleon as well. Massive influences from there because if you look at um, chameleons when they walk, they're very slow and they're very deliberate and as they walk up a branch or something they grab onto you know, a, a trunk or something and then it's very slow deliberate, a little bit like a, a slop or something like that so you can see the influences throughout here. If you look at chameleon's body as well you can see it kind of juts out and it's got a fat bit in the middle and the only thing missing is actually the tail so but apart from that this is definitely based on that creature I'm absolutely sure of it so and which is good I mean if you're going to create your own uh, models and things you need to uh, it's sometimes good to actually base it on uh, creatures as you can see here this is a very iconic um, and the reason is because obviously Creatures um, are in the real, real world, they're natural, we've seen them, so we're familiar with them. And not only that, they're built perfectly, so when you come to build something you base it around them, then obviously it looks right and it looks like it's built perfectly as well. So now what I did there is I actually bridged those faces, extruded them out, and then I've got that middle bit then that I can turn around to where I want it to. And now what I'm doing is I'm just pulling out this uh, this back part of it ready um, for when I'm joining it together because I know on the reference how it comes together is just actually creating the mesh to bring it all together and as I said in the beginning the hardest part of this build is actually bringing everything together so again I'll say if you're a, if you're a beginner or something try building the parts out individually one at a time and then in the end try bringing them all together What I tend to do when I build is I'm, I kind of jump around um, to different places um, and why I do that is just be, so I can actually work on it for much much longer so, so you know I worked on this pretty much straight um, I think it was six to eight hours something like that and I basically started and I just carried them all the way through till it was actually finished near enough so and that's because I'm jumping around on different bits keeping me interested um, you know really getting into the build things like that Alright, so here I knew that if I split up the um, legs, so actually then I would be able to move them a bit down the line, so that, because I, I knew that when, when you look at these uh, AT walkers, you'll see that their feet at the bottom, they can't actually overlap, so they can't actually stand with their feet next to each other. Now, this caused uh, Luke some issues, because when you're working in Substance Painter, you want everything to be mirrored. So you want to have a perfect split down the middle, and everything to be mirrored on one side and the left side. Um, but on this one, if I did that, then it would have messed around with the actual baking um, in Substance Painter, so that's why I actually moved the actual feet, because they're not designed to actually stand next to each other. It's the only thing I've worked on with, and it, you can't put in a T-pose, basically, they just can't go together. It's a bit like having a human and having to put one kind of leg in front of the other because their feet, they touch. And that's exactly what this is like, so. The other thing is with uh, building uh, more detail, you can actually get a better sense of scale uh, when you put in more detail. The less detail you have, the harder it is to convey um, scale. So you'll notice something like mountains and things like that. Um, lots and lots of uh, sharp points, lots of edges, things like that, and it gives it a sense of scale then when you pull it out. If, you're, if you pull out a cube, let's say, and there's nothing but the cube, so just flat edges, you'll see that when you pull it out, you don't actually get that sense of scale. You can still take a, a shot where you're actually looking up and trying to get that sense of scale, but it's very difficult to do. So that's another reason why we had a lot of detail to this, because we wanted that shot where we're actually looking up at the you know at the AT Walker and see, just seeing the overall awe and sense of scale like you saw in the actual movies that's what we're actually trying to recapture here because when you look at the human scale um, against these things uh, the human just comes up to um, basically um, the little the little pointy bits that come out of the feet they come up to there they're absolutely tiny you know 
Uh, how they actually get into these things, I have, I have no idea, so... So now you can see that those uh, feet, uh, again, they're quite iconic. Um, and the main silhouette, um, you need to make sure you get right. Which is what I'm trying to do. Those parts on the actual uh, feet, or ankles, let's call them. Um, they're not actually round, they're actually oblong. Now if I put round ones in there, it's not going to look right. So that's why I'm trying to just get that silhouette nailed down. I'm also actually thinking all the time when I'm actually doing this, like, are we actually going to rig it? And this actual uh, model actually is easily capable of rigging. So if any of you guys uh, download this, you can rig it as easy as anything. It won't be hard at all because again, there are all of the points, they're split. So anything that needs to turn, as you can see in the build, you can just put a bone there and then you can easily turn that part and then just weight it to the rest of the leg or something like that. So really easy to rig this if you wanted to rig it and the head of course um, again would be really easy because it's all split into sections so like even this bit here uh, the ankle is split into sections and as you can see that that actual long part in there you can actually move that um, left and right and it will slide in and out of there again making it really easy all right so moving on to the feet and the feet um, actually was a hard part because We've got to get them looking the right size and we've also got to make sure that they look the way they're supposed to. And I feel like the feet on the actual reference were a little bit uh, too big so they poked out a little bit too much. So I decided to make my feet a little bit smaller than the actual reference. You can see there again what I did was I made use of the knife tool but I didn't hold control or anything, instead I just clicked on the vertice to get that nice um, even line going up all the way around as you can see. Now these are the toes, now this toe is how big a human would be, that's how huge these things are. And you can see at the moment that my toes are really long there, I'm trying to match the actual reference. But once um, I tried to put these legs together as you'll see, they didn't actually match. So now I'm thinking is, I can't put the legs together and this is where I found out that they don't actually go together so now you can see I'm pulling it out putting the legs together and then realizing that that's actually not going to work because you've lost the silhouette then it doesn't look the same thing and um, so we had to go back put them next to each other make those toes a little bit smaller and then mirror it over the other side and then you'll see that I actually use the, um, the joints to bend the actual legs to put them in place so you can see at the moment, I'm going to mirror it over the other side, but before I do that, I might as well put this like kind of bolt on there. It's like one of the main bolts that holds the, uh, well, probably takes oil or something like that, or some fluids down to the actual, you know, bottom foot to make it work uh, correctly. So now you can see, look, I'm actually changing the orientation. And now because I've done that, now I can actually move the whole thing like you see. So there you go, it's just working out, right, can it be done? Yes, it can. Okay, let's finish this off and then let's mirror it over the other side like so and there you go and now let's apply that and now let's come in and actually move this foot now what I was worried about when I did that is that the foot obviously when you move it forward it's not going to be level with the other foot that's uh, you know in the middle because as you move forward the foot will naturally go up and if you move backwards it will naturally go up again so you can see that what I did was I was playing on the fact that we're going to put this on a kind of uh, sandy desert so we're not actually going to, you know, see that. But if you put it flat on a plane or something, you definitely see that two of the feet would be higher um, than the other. All right, so now I'm bringing in lighting, which I always do um, around this point, just to get a feeling of what it's going to look like, checking out my silhouette. And I've basically bought some HDR lighting in there um, with an actual gradient which is free actually on our Gumroad, I think. I'm sure we've got an HDR lighting on there. Um, so check that out. All right, so now we come to the hard part. So pretty much the rest of the build has been fairly easy up till this point. And now it's the hard part because we no longer really have decent referencing for this part. 
And you can see there, as I actually tried to join it together, it didn't actually join together right. There was too many actual um, edges going to the same vertex there. So what I do, did was, I just added some edge loops and then pressed Alt F to actually fill it in. And you can also see at the moment, now I'm working with the actual lighting that I've got in there. And that's because I want to get a good feel of how it's actually going to look underneath. I want to make sure it actually looks right because it's probably going to be a shot that you're going to take. So. As I say, this part is actually the most difficult. It's kind of like bringing everything together in the middle and hoping everything meets up from all the little parts that you've built before. So now I'm actually starting on the back. I'm just trying to get the uh, first back part in. I realize that this is never going to work this part. So I end up deleting it in the end, recreating it. And there you go. Like so, and I'm much happier with how that one turned out. And then I'm going to, I think, move on then to the actual um, underside of it. Just getting a general shape, first of all, of the silhouette, because then that will actually help me uh, develop the underside. Because if you look at the underside uh, of the AT Walker, you'll see that there's kind of a tube going all the way down the middle that connects all of the legs and things like that up. And that's basically what I'm, what I'm trying to do here. So I know that once I've got that back in, then I can kind of come in and connect everything up together. Without it, it's basically going to be much, much harder to do. Again, I'm using the ball tool that's free within Blender. And there we go. Now I'm actually starting the underside of it because I have something to actually reference it against and fit everything together. So that was the third, third attempt at actually creating that back part. And again, it's because trying to bring everything together is the hardest part. So I'm just building it out a little bit, but I do come back to this right at the end. And you won't see it because I forgot to record, but you'll see it on the actual turntable and things like that. All right, so now I'm doing is I'm deciding like, I need to bring this, um, you know, this bottom of it in, in some way. So I need to fit it all together. As you can see there, what I'm trying to do is basically hide the underside of it and then kind of cheat a little and then bring the inside in, which is gonna make it much, much easier. And you can see again, because I'm finding it quite difficult to actually do this, I'm actually flitting around and, you know, going back to the back and then going to the middle because I'm trying to decide in my head how I'm actually going to do it. So a simple array there just to create some uh, fans and then we use the bisect tool and just cut those away. One of my favourite tools is the bisect tool, really really easy tool to use. So also the other thing is at this point I think I was on around 6 hours, something like that and you know, we only get a certain amount of time here um, to build, to produce each of these and obviously we're in course development as well. Um, so we have to make sure that uh, all of these are pretty much done and dusted within 10 hours, something around there for everything. That includes setting up all the environments, all the textures, everything is around 10 hours, which is actually really, really a small amount of time. Normally, as I say, anything in, you know, creating assets and environments, you normally would be talking 20, 30 hours minimum. Um, and for a really high end model, you can sometimes be talking 80 or 90 hours uh, on it. So it's a fairly big ask, uh, you know, every uh, week when we create these, but we always manage to uh, pull it off normally. We just have to cut a lot of corners to actually uh, bring our end results, or it would be in two parts, or it would be, you know, three hours long or something like that. So you can see here now, I'm actually uh, really, really getting into this part, actually really um, starting to bring it all together. And again, as I said, we're not actually using so much of a reference here, we're actually creating it pretty much, um, well, I'm creating it pretty much myself, and just trying to make it look, give you that artistic style. And again, I'm looking at things like chameleons and things like that, that I know or I believe that this was actually based on.
But I will say it again, like the actual build itself, it's not um, something that's technically difficult. Um, pretty much it's the same tools um, over and over again. The hardest part, if you are taking this on, is bringing it all together. So just, just make sure, as I say, um, just take a small part of this and create that and then see how you go from there. So now I'm just adding all of the you know, kind of bumps and lumps and uh, booleans and things like that that really make this up because if you think about it as well if this AT Walker didn't have any of those and they were just plain boxes um, it wouldn't look the same, it wouldn't be as formidable, it wouldn't look as realistic so that's actually what uh, does all the work. Now that bit in the front, you can see that's the iconic kind of red um, type laser thing that's on the front. And now basically I'm just finishing all of the little parts off now. Um, I, I'm not sure actually at this point if we've finished the underneath. I don't think so, not quite yet. But what I'm doing is now I'm just coming in, adding all of the little parts to it now. The parts where I know Luke can't go in, go in and add them on the normal map because um, a lot of things actually can be created on normal maps so even, um, especially in sci-fi, if you grab yourself some really really nice um, alphas and brushes in sci-fi then you can really uh, stick vents on the, th on the sides and things like that. Alright so I did actually do the bottom so what I'm actually doing now is just pulling everything together making sure everything's like selected you can see that's what I'm doing now I'm doing is adding the materials and now before now basically I'm coming to the back where you won't see that because what I'm actually going to do is basically split all the there you go the back I think no it's not right not quite there yet I'm basically going around now I'm just making sure that everything's correct all the dimensions are correct and then I move on to the back I think the back at this point is actually done and now I'm just creating that actual clip we wanted to give it the look actually of you know the um, like it's actually on the plinth so something like from White Dwarf or something like that or one of the little marines where it's sat on a, a huge plinth that's what we wanted to do because actually if you went in and fixed a little part of this mesh and things like that you could definitely go in and 3D print this and not only that you could probably go in and 3D print this like a, a huge actual um, you know um, AT walker if you printed it out in little parts or something so so yeah, you could absolutely do that if you wanted to. All right, so now I'm actually trying to uh, get rid of the sand that I've actually created on the outside. I use a boolean, and now I'm just gonna pull that in just to make that sand actually sit on top. And now let's pull down the edges. There you go, just using the small, smooth, vertical smooth, that's called. I'm getting it all to line up. And there we go, now you can see because I told you that the, the feet they don't quite actually uh, sit on the ground so I'm just pulling it out now and just making sure I'm sitting on the ground just so it looks like uh, we can get that really really nice um, look of it and it, we need to add uh, contact shadows as well uh, to make it look as though it's heavy and it's sat on the ground now you can see I've grabbed the font that actually um, isn't the Star Wars font but it's one that's close to it look really nice so that's the one I used then I just needed to actually use simple deform just to bend it around. I just need to be careful here. I wanted to try and add in some uh, subdivisions um, to actually make sure that we could uh, bend it because when you're actually using simple deform, you need to be careful that you've got enough subdivisions in to bend something. Now you can see what I did was I tried filling, I've got three of them out there and the reason I've got three of them out is one I'm actually using a very high uh, subdivision on, one I'm remeshing, one I'm using a lattice on. I've got three there so I don't have to actually go in and recreate the actual, uh, you know, this AT Walker um, logo that I've put on there. And that's why I've done it. In the end though, I actually just went in and used um, an actual lattice so it did make it really easy. So easier than simple deform actually because again, uh, simple deform might deform your mesh. Um, so you just have to be careful where's the lattice. It's just a much easier workflow actually so that's why I used it. Now I'm just making sure that they're all you know kind of in the same position and there we go I think I'm uh, pretty happy with that just getting rid of that last bit making sure it's not you know no flashing where the face is uh, touching on the face and things like that 
and now I'm just putting on the extra parts which is these little side parts and you can see at the moment actually <laughs> the back isn't built still not built the back so I'll probably leave them that till last and there we go and then they'll go on the side because uh, really big things like that actually um, there's no way that Luke in, in the substance painter is going to be able to you know put that on the side it's just way way too big so better actually to create that in the models the little tiny uh, parts you know little steps things like that tiny vents and things you can absolutely do in substance painter or in ZBrush you could get a brush a sci-fi brush and just uh, drag and pull vents out all over it and then what you do is obviously read to apologize and then you'd end up with all those like things like this those little things there you could absolutely do in either ZBrush or Substance Painter. Actually, this is the first build in a while where uh, we've not actually used a um, you know ZBrush, so it's basically done in Blender. Uh, the sand we used a displacement map, and um, I think it was marble, and um, we used and we just uh, pulled out the scale of the marble. You can see I'm unwrapping it now. What I'm trying to do on that plinth is actually unwrap it cor uh, correctly, and using light map pack. Um, if you use that um, and then you re-unwrap it and um, follow inactive quads, it will unwrap around the circle. It's a really weird way actually of going about it, but I find it's the easiest way to unwrap um, cylinders uh, that are at an angle. Because if you, if you angle any cylinder, Blender will always try and bend them and actually straighten them out is it's not so easy. So now I'm doing is I'm actually splitting it all off. Uh, giving them a material, colouring the material so I can see that they're all split off um, and then what I'm doing is unwrapping them so I think we use something like five UV maps here you could get away with one UV map obviously you're going to lose a lot of resolution if you do that so that's why we choose normally not to do that because we're trying to show the piece off and you know just show how nice it is and things like that alright so now actually I'm going in and making sure all of the normals are correct so making sure all of the faces are facing the correct way because I know uh, when this comes to um, Luke um, and he takes him to Substance Painter, then he absolutely uh, needs to make sure that he's correcting all of those normals and things. Alright, so that brings us basically to the end of the modeling section of our AT Star Wars Walker. I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you learned a lot, and now we're going to be moving on to the actual texturing part. So, happy modeling everyone, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, bye bye. Alright, now in order to start my texturing process, I wanted to check out all the assets and how they're set up within the UV space, just to make sure that nothing is overlapping and all of the normal maps are set up properly. And after I was happy with the overall kind of a checkup, I went ahead and straight away just baked all of our mesh maps in order to get all the needed information like ambient occlusion, curvature maps, which in turn will basically allow us to get some generated textures that will up the overall texturing process so we're going to work with multiple texture maps to get more resolution out of this entire asset from the first look it seems like the at walker would be a simple kind of a texturing process but that is a deceiving factor as in the overall kind of a texture that has to be applied on this entire asset needs to be properly set up so what i'm doing right now is making sure that all the grunge map masks are properly overlaid with one another and that we have a nice small material to use that we can later on apply onto the rest of the body so i'm using just the main body for that and making sure that i'm applying a triplane projection just to make sure that none of the seams are interfering with the overall kind of a style that we're going to have and the textures kind of blend in properly together so once i was happy with the overall kind of material for the metal i just overlaid some grunge masks together with one another blended them in together and when i was happy with the result i decided to get some leak texture for the areas of the metal as well and i got myself a kind of a nice texture but i didn't quite like the overall kind of color that i was getting out of it so i decided to leave it as is for now and get myself a curvature masks first just to highlight some of those detail within this asset and once i was happy with that i just got myself a nice curvature highlighter with some texture overlaid on top of it that would break apart these edges and make it look more natural then i decided to change away the color for the leaks and actually use it as a kind of a sand splatter looking smudge since this entire asset is going to be standing on a platform that's going to have a sort of a deserty look so we obviously want to make it look as if it's part of that environment so that is why i decided to start off by having some sandy smudge on top of it 
After I was happy with that, I decided to get some leaks for the sides of the windows and whatnot. So I decided to start it off by getting the overall kind of a texture that I'd be able to use it later with paint mode. And I just overlaid a couple of textures with one another and used a triplaner to make sure I avoid all the seams. And then I just kind of applied it on the overall mesh by using the manual painting mode. And basically that just allowed me to control where all that texture goes. So by doing that, I also made sure I used symmetry on the main body as well just to speed up the process since the other side looked pretty much the same and by doing that I was able to get some really nice results in a quick kind of way of course for the front we had to make sure we turn off the symmetry because otherwise it would look identical and we don't want this to happen and by the way I was using an artistic brush just to get myself a more texture out of the painting out of the mask and this will just ensure that the blending or the overall kind of a grunge that we're making is set up properly and blends in nicely with the overall material. So once I was happy with the overall kind of a design, I decided to play around a little bit more with the masking and just get more of the grunge. I kind of realized that underneath the metallic that we're having is not set up properly and it doesn't have enough dirt to kind of support the overall design for this metal and it would look otherwise too plain. So what I decided to do is I decided to add a little bit more of a kind of a oily, gritty look that just has some splatters all over the place. And then I realized that we're actually losing some detail from the highlighted area. So what I decided to do is I just got myself a curvature generator and set it up as a cavity mask. And then I also made sure that I overlay some dirt just to get some nice noise and it would look like as if there is some dirt within the cavities and this way we're also making sure that we're just highlighting some of those deeper areas so that turned out quite nice so once i was happy with the overall design for the metal i just ended up duplicating this entire material and just using a brush the same way i did for the main body and kind of highlighting some of the areas where there'd be more of a leak result that we'd get within joints and whatnot and then i realized that for the bottom of the feet i need to make sure that we add somewhere as well and so i decided to use a position mask and just got all of the bottom of the feet highlighted and this way i was able to apply some of the dirt for them so once i was happy with that i moved on with the head i tried using the symmetry and then i realized that the entire head is turned slightly towards the side so we weren't able to use that so i had to manually kind of texture all the sides myself but that was a relatively easy thing to do since the smart material most of the detail was already set up with in regards to curvature mask and the cavities so i was quite happy with that i went ahead and just textured the middle section of the legs for the at walker pretty much did the same thing with the metal and just applied some of the brush detail as well and once i was happy with that i kind of realized that the front of the face doesn't have enough detail and i'd rather just add extra detail using the height maps and then afterwards we'll be able to bake them off within our normal maps which will ensure that we get some nicer detail from the side so i was using basically two fill materials one that goes inwards and one that goes outwards and this way we were able to get some real nice results where the panels are bumping out and some bits are going inwards and yeah that just created some really nice looking results but i wasn't really happy with the way the texture is being applied since the curvature and the cavity masks were basically ignoring this entire material the high channels so what i decided to do is i used an anchor point but i was having some trouble with the anchor point because what i totally forgot is that uh, the anchor point has to be underneath all the masks that need to be used with the anchor points so basically the cavity masks and the curvature masks they all have to be above that anchor point and what anchor point basically allows us to do is we just are able to make use out of the height information and get some of the edge wear that we have in our material the same way as we'd have it in our geometry so that was quite nice and once i was happy with that i just ended up getting some bolts stuck to the legs just to make sure that i highlight some of that detail and i wasn't quite happy with the way those vents have no depth so what i ended up doing is i just got myself a really black texture not completely pitch black but just close enough to the pitch black and then i completely turned off the roughness channel so we wouldn't get any of the gloss from the sides of those panels and then i basically masked out all the gaps and left it as is i think it created a real nice kind of a depth to those vents so once i was happy with that i ended up trying to get some sand textures and i was 
firstly, thinking about just creating it manually using masks and grunge masks provided within the substance painter itself, but I wasn't quite happy with the results. So what I ended up doing is I ended up just getting a texture from Substance Alchemist that has a really nice sand texture. I just got it exported out and I basically applied the upper mask that I had previously to highlight some of those bumps as well as I made sure to use a position mask to highlight those hills and make sure they kind of sand out a little bit more. And once I was happy with the overall kind of sand texture, I actually came back to it later on and just adjusted the color value a little bit just to, so we could get a nicer looking texture. But going back to the platform, I made sure that the sides have this kind of a plasticky look that you'd see within a miniature version of a figurine. And I quite like the way it turned out. I just got myself a yellow texture with a dark gray sort of a look as the base foundation. And what I realized was that I was getting some errors on the text itself. It wasn't baking off ambient occlusion properly. And then I looked back into Blender and I realized that because it's an end gun, it was just kind of struggling to triangulate it. So I ended up just going back onto Blender and triangulating it manually myself, then getting the mesh re-imported and I just rebaked the ambient occlusion only for the text. And once I was happy with that, I got a bit of a gradient for the overall color and I just wanted to highlight the overall edges just to make it look a little bit more cartoony and kind of give that bit of a contrast from the overall realism that I'm using for the AT Walker textures. So once I was happy with the overall design for the platform, I went back to the overall kind of a design and I really wanted to highlight some of those leaks. So I actually got myself some stamps from within the Substance Painter and I just got myself some darker leaks for more specified areas. I was playing around with how I'm going to set them up and how I'm going to make them look nicer. But in the end, I just realized that I just need to make sure that I only have it for some specific parts just to make sure I break off the overall kind of a design and the material itself wouldn't look as bland by having this one material applied onto the overall design. So I pretty much did that to get some additional detail out of it and get myself some nicer results. And once I was happy with that, I pretty much just ended up exporting all of the textures out as a 4K resolution. And they were using an Unreal Engine packed preset, which allows us to get occlusion roughness and metallic packed in one texture, which we're then going to be able to use them as separate channels. So I was quite happy with the overall design. And once I was done exporting everything out, I was ready for the Unreal Engine part to set up the entire environment. Now that we have ourselves an AT Walker as well as all of its textures, we're now ready to be setting it up within a scene in order to have ourselves a nice environment. So we're starting off by importing all of our assets and making sure that the pack texture maps have sRGB turned off. And I'm just creating myself a quick PBR material and making sure that all of them are properly attached to the right channels. So once I've done that, I just made sure that they're all set as parameters so we could make use out of the entire material and create instances out of it. And I just made sure that I reassign all of the textures like so, just so we can make use out of them and apply it onto our asset. So once we were done with that, we just had to make sure we replace all the materials with the material instances that we just created. So we'd be able to get all the textures on our asset. And after checking how it looks, I just went right in into the lighting stage and just played around with how the shadows are being applied onto the asset. I basically deleted all of the clouds from the default scene and just made sure I only keep the skylight, exponential fog and direction light. And using that, just combining it all, we're able to get really nice results for the lighting as well as for the background kind of a transition gradient. So for the skylight, I made sure to just use a cube texture map provided within the Unreal Engine itself to get some nice ambient lighting. And I played around with the kind of a sunset that we'd have just to get more of a dramatic effect. But in the end, I didn't quite like the overall red tint that I was getting. I wanted to make sure that I keep that kind of a gray color as visible as possible and didn't want to have any kind of a tint. And so I made sure to remove the tint later on. So right now I'm also making sure I'm adding some action to this entire kind of a scene and just adding some beams. So I'm using a modeling mode to get some capsules and AT Walker is shooting them out. I'm making sure I'm making one of them larger and one of them smaller just to break the overall kind of a silhouette and make the overall design look nicer. And then after I was happy with the overall shape, all we had to do is apply a red emission, make sure it glows. We just had to get into the post process volume and increase the bloom effect. 
but doing just that kind of bleaches out all the rest of the colors as it tries to give bloom to the rest of the asset as well so what we had to do was we had to make sure that the threshold is increased so the bloom would only be applied onto the brightest areas in which case this happens to be the red emission so once i was happy with that i ended up just playing around with the kind of texture that you get on the feet i didn't like the way we didn't have any depth next to the feet for the sand and it looked like the overall kind of design was just floating on top of the platform i didn't quite like that so i tried playing around with the ambient occlusion and kind of increasing its strength and was hoping that would fix it but it didn't quite give me the same kind of results so what i ended up doing just so what i ended up doing in order to get more depth out of it was going back to the substance painter and actually kind of darkening the areas for the sand around the feet and this way i was able to get some nice results and it looked like it was standing on top of the platform itself so it was much much nicer so once i was happy with that i was trying to play it around how i'm going to present my work and i was thinking to start it off with actually trying to make use out of a solid color and i just created myself a post-process volume material if you're interested in how i made this material itself i was actually doing it from scratch within a minecart scene so if you're interested in that so if you're interested in how i set up this solid color make sure to go ahead and check that video out and right now i'm just playing around with how i'm going to present it and set it up but basically i used a high resolution screenshot and it actually has a custom depth that removes the mask itself but i find it that it gives some sort of a flicker for the background so i tend to just make myself a custom post-process effect that fixes that issue. I tried making a solid color background to key it out in a post-process, but then I realized that I was using a bloom effect and because of it, it was just going to give me some nasty results. I played around with Photoshop a little bit, but even in Photoshop, I wasn't able to get some nice results out of it. So instead of what I ended up doing is I just left it off as a simple gradient. Since I quite liked the overall the result, I just wanted to try to remove the background color because that would have given me more control on how the gradient is being transitioned because right now when we're having the gradient in three dimensional space when we're rotating the camera to be like above an asset it'll change the angle of the overall asset and as well as the gradient itself so we're going to get a different result on a gradient based on the angle of our camera if it's looking upwards or downwards so yeah moving on after i was happy with the overall screenshots for the images i wanted to get some videos as well so i started to set up some cameras and i just got myself a level sequencer and cine camera actor and just started playing around with the shots the first shots that i got myself was some panning shots the front view and the side view just to make sure i have some basic renders and then i was playing around with some more interesting shots of course we had to make sure we have some turntable set up as well but once i was happy with that i just basically set up a focal point and attach the camera to it and when i'm rotating the focal point we're able to have a control of how the camera is being moved so that's quite nice in a way it's sort of like using a crane motion which unreal engine also has it but i prefer to just work it manually myself as i feel like i have more control over what i'm doing so right now I'm just setting up all the shots and making sure I have some nice renders. I'm trying to figure out if I want a couple of shots to be from the low angle just to make the overall miniature look way larger. And I'm trying to figure out what kind of lens I want, how close I want it to be zooming in and whatnot, and how much distortion I want within my view. So by playing around with the focal length, you're able so to get some nice distortion. And I didn't want to go overboard, but I didn't want to make it look completely flat. So I got myself a value that was just kind of in the middle. I think I used a value of 15 with a universal zoom lens and I was just able to get some nice results out of that. So after I got myself some main shots of the overall asset, I decided to play around with some close-ups as well. And I only got myself a couple of close-ups and one was for the head and another one was for the leg. Just to make sure that I highlight some of the nicer areas with my renders. And after I was happy with that, I decided to play around with kind of an aerial shot. I got myself a camera to move over an entire thing. And then while it moves using that focal point, I just made sure that I also rotated my camera downwards so it would pick up more of that detail while it's going over the entire asset. So once I got myself all of the shots, I just got myself a movie renderer plugin and just got myself a preset that I always use, loaded up and basically exported everything out as a JPEG sequence, which I then use Premiere to stitch everything together and get myself some videos out of them. 
And now we're finished with it all, let's go ahead and review the entire process. The modeling part took 5 hours and 30 minutes to complete, as in order to model the asset you need a lot of details to add, but the section wasn't that technical or difficult. It had a few parts where you may need to do some research on how best to create it, but apart from that it was pretty much straightforward. The hard part comes into play from two things to bear in mind. One, if you're new to 3D modeling, this AT Walker may simply be too big of a project. It has many, many parts and although I did create another variation when first starting out my own 3D artist journey, it was very basic as opposed to this version of a build. In other words, if you're new and want to create this, then go right ahead but keep it much more simple than this design. The other hard part of this build is getting the references for everything, especially the undercarriage. Which to be honest, I couldn't find really anything on it except for some schematics which are good for scale but was hard to visualize on. So all in all, I'm going to give this a solid 7 out of 10 with it not being as hard technically as our previous project, the Witcher Tower, but it was harder to bring everything together. The texturing part was 1 hour and 40 minutes as although there aren't a lot of texture variations for the asset, we do need to make sure that we add custom detail throughout the texture to ensure that the entire AT Walker is not just a bland looking mesh. So to start it off, I had to create a small material for the metal which could be easily applied to an entire mesh. The texture uses a variety of grunge map blends as well as generators to make sure it brings out a detail nicely out of the guy's metal shell whilst still making sure it is consistent with the metal design. Also, I made sure to paint in some custom leaks manually where needed to ensure I highlight some of those vents coming out of the mesh. All in all, although it looks quite simple to texture, because of its seemingly simplistic color, that only means that all the smaller detail will stand out even more, and so we had to focus on tweaking all the values with more care. With that being said, I don't think you can go wrong with texturing this entire asset as it already has a really nice look with just a solid material on. So making use out of it and playing around with textures would give you a really nice look as long as you don't overdo it with detail and not make it just completely noisy. So all in all, I will give this one a 3 out of 10 only because we had to manually paint in some of the detail which might be harder for a beginner to do. The environment setup part took 1 hour and 20 minutes to set up and keep in mind that it is including with all the cameras set up as well, so it was a relatively fast process. The main reason for such a short setup was because of the reason that we wanted to make sure that we set this up in a way that it would look like a miniature version of an AT Walker that you could just buy off any store with a Star Wars miniatures. There was no real need to create any particle effects or anything like that to create motion within a scene. We just had to make sure that it looks like a nice still motion with some action in it. And that is why we also added some beams to both of those heavy laser cannons to make it look like it's in the midst of a fight. By simply applying emissive texture with a bloom effect, it gave the right kind of results. Then the rest of the work to set up the scene was simply playing around with the lighting and getting the right type of gradient for the background. So all in all, I'm going to give this one a 2 out of 10 as all it took was just to focus on presenting the model nicely and show off the work without much of a flaw. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the video for the Star Wars fan art model guide. Make sure to give us a like if you did and don't forget to drop a comment down below of what you would like to see us do next. We are currently working on an online course focusing on creating a module dungeon using a kit bash assets. So I'm really excited about that and can't wait to share a completed guide with you all. Also check out the links down below to see a massive library of courses we have available which are free to anyone that signs up to our Patreon. We also have some free goods on our Gumroad, things like texture packs and some models for anyone to download. And so that'll be all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.